Hey guys, first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet and you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, just click that button and yeah, really appreciating all the feedback and everything. Um, it's great. Thank you. So if you've seen some of my other videos, I do have some videos on the discus that I used to have. I did actually sell them because I had a little three foot tank of salt water and I've just really fallen in love with salt water so I've actually sold all my discus to fund my new salt water tank obsession. Um, so that's why this is now salt water, I don't actually have a discus anymore. But I wanted to share with you um, some things that I did learn from having them. I have discus for about two years. Um, or just under and while I wasn't actually intentionally trying to breed them I did have a pair that regularly laid eggs and so I just wanted to share some stuff around that how to know when your discus are wanting to breed and all that sort of stuff so um, keep watching I'm gonna go through it all in this video hope you enjoy it and learn something even if it's just little so the thing with discus is it's extremely hard to figure out male from female i know there's people out there that claim that they can figure it out but i don't know i couldn't and most people can't so if you are wanting to breed discus i'd highly recommend to get at least eight to start off with and to see who's going to pick who to pair off if you are wanting to go into breeding really seriously then a lot of people say that you should only breed within the same colouring. You've got your blue base and your red base um, coloured discus. So um, you'd only breed blue base discus together and you'd only breed red base discus together. So um, the reason for that is that if you cross the two, you can often get babies that are just covered in black spots, which is that peppering, if you're mixing the red and the blue, and you might get a couple of babies that are actually half decent, but most of the fry will probably come out with that heavy, heavy peppering on them. So the two that actually paired up in my tank were a blue base and a red base, so, sorry, a pigeon blood and a blue base. So. If I did end up going really into breeding, their babies most likely would have been that heavily peppered uh, fry because it's mis mixing the pigeon blood and the and the blue base discus. So um, yeah, it's just one of those things. And that's it. If I had chosen a whole group in the blue base or a whole bunch of pigeon blood, then they can breed um, in between. That's totally fine, and you wouldn't have any issues with that peppering. Um, but yeah, as soon as you um, start crossing the two and the, the pigeon blood and the blue base and the yellow base and whatever, there's lots of different bases. Um, definitely yeah. something to look into because if you're thinking, oh great, these two are going to breed um, and you have success in it, you might end up with 90% of the fry with that black black peppering all over their face. Whereas um, you could avoid that if you bred two within the same sort of strain of discus and had a higher chance of a batch of fry that actually looks nice and doesn't have that black peppering all over them. So that's why it's really important um, if you are wanting to breed discus. Uh, I mean, you can buy pears which are really expensive or you could just buy a whole group of discus, eight, eight or so, and that's why it's so important to really look into what colour discus you're getting in that group because if you do have the intention of wanting to breed them, you need to make sure that you're going to be happy with the outcome of the fry and if you mix the blue based discus with the pigeon blood you know based discus um, you're going to end up with most of the fry um, having that peppering on them i did make a video on black spots on discus fish which um, you can go and have a look at that if you're not sure what peppering on discus means um, it'll just basically explain um, you know what it is. Once you've got that sorted, you've got the colours that you're wanting to breed and the sort of strains that you're wanting to keep between. Um, so yeah, the way that you know that your discus have paired up, I guess they basically stick by each other's side all the time. They stay with each other within the tank. Um, they're always over in the corner together. Um, uh, another way you can tell that they're paired up is that they will do this sort of shimmy dance which I'll show you a video of now of the pair that I had and the sort of shimmy dance that they do.
So that's the sort of breeding sort of signal when you see discus do that sort of shape, that's a breeding sign. So if you if you notice your discus doing that, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just trying to pair up or, you know, impress the lady. Or Sometimes you even have two females or two males. It can make it a little bit tricky, but the only way that you'll know uh, that it's a true pair is when they actually start to lay eggs, which is really hard because apparently there are cases where the female, where there's two females and they'll pair up or there's two males and they fully look like a pair but they're not. So it is a little bit tricky and you'll only kind of know when they have actually started laying eggs which one's the male and which one's the female. I will say breeding discus or getting them to lay eggs at least is a lot easier than you would think. My discus used to be kept in tap water and just to give you an idea, I recently got a reverse osmosis uh, filter, which um, has the DI cartridge, which I need for the salt water. But anyway, um, it comes with a TDS meter, which measures the amount of crap basically in the water. Where I live, uh, the TDS meter actually read at 440 for the tap water, and that's what my discus were living in and they actually bred in that water, which is crazy. I know everyone says, oh, discus have to have this, this, and this, um, but my discus actually laid eggs <laughs> and bred in that sort of quality of water, which is really, really bad. And I only realized how bad our tap water was when I got that TDS meter. Um, because RO water, which you can buy from your pet shop or you can buy a filter, which I've done, um, will actually bring your TDS reading down to one. So that's a pretty huge jump when you've got 440, which my discus were living in and breeding in, down to one. So, yeah, I guess all I'm trying to say is that there's this whole thing about discus being extremely fussy about their water and everything like that. Um, maybe they would have been even happier if I kept them in reverse osmosis water, RO water, but I guess I had two discus that every time I did a water change, they would lay eggs every single week that I did a water change. Yeah, going back to say your group of eight that you might start off with, you may only end up with one or two pairs in that eight but it gives you a higher chance if you just got two fish and you don't know if they're male or female you might get two males and you have no idea if they're actually going to end up pairing up um, because discus you know they sort of choose who they want to pair up with they're the type that you know you can't just chuck a male and a female they have to kind of like each other so they decide who they're going to who they're going to breed with so that's why i highly suggest getting a group of at least eight and then you should get at least one pair out of that if not hopefully two. Back to them pairing up so you'll notice that they sort of stick by each other's side they do this sort of mating shimmy that they do and um, then it gets to the part where they start laying eggs which is super cool. I had a uh, community tank that they were in and unfortunately the first few times um, the rummy nose that I had in the tank actually ate the eggs um, before you know as soon as they were laid pretty much. Uh, I think I've got some video on that. So that was the first time that uh, this pair actually laid eggs. Um, yeah, they, they unfortunately all got eaten. Another thing to note is you have to be extremely patient with breeding discus if you are wanting to, you know, invest in this pair and you want them to, you know, wanting to get fry out of them. Unfortunately, it sometimes takes them a few goes to actually get it right. So um, I remember the first time. Uh, my male actually got involved in eating the eggs as well 
um, and that's something you might find. Um, but I did notice because it was every single week that I did the water change that they laid eggs over the weeks that the male actually less and less, you know, ate, ate the eggs and actually realized, oh, you know, he actually became like quite a good little dad and protector of the eggs by the end of it, um, by the end of the time, of, you know, me having discus. Um, but every single time they just got that little bit better at what they were doing. Um, so it's a little bit of a patience and, you know, they, they definitely take a little while for a pair to sort of figure out how they're going to, I guess, parent these eggs and um, how they're going to do it. So if you might get some eggs, it, it does take most discus a little while to understand how to be a good parent to those eggs and how to protect them from other fish. Um, how to not eat them and all that sort of stuff. So, um, with the male fertilizing the eggs, it took um, this male a little while to figure out what he was doing and um, I noticed the coloring of the eggs. Um, I think it takes about three days normally for the eggs to sort of start hatching. Um, and if you notice the eggs starting to go white, that means that they weren't fertilized properly or you know they just didn't get fertilized at all so um, that's really important as well just noticing the color of the eggs you want them to be sort of a um, see-through color you might even see a little black speck in them but they need to stay that stay that color the entire three days they start to go white or they start to go furry then they're no good and um, they weren't fertilized or they're getting bacteria growing on them or something like that I noticed that my discus always laid eggs on vertical sort of surfaces um, that's one way that you can get your discus to lay eggs or to trigger them into that sort of spawning um, sort of state is to put something that vertical in the tank. Quite often they'll go uh, and lay eggs on the sort of intake and out of your filter, sometimes even just on the glass. Um, you can buy uh, breeding cones that a lot of people and um, proper breeders use and they put it in the middle of the tank um, and the discus break, uh, lay their eggs on there. If you do find that your discus are laying eggs, um, but they just keep getting eaten. Um, a lot of people and mesh protection around whatever the eggs are on uh, so that they can't be eaten. And it just gives you a higher sort of survival rate of the eggs um, not being eaten by the parents. Because sometimes they do fertilize and then they just eat it or they just can't help themselves but eat the eggs. So um, having that mesh sometimes is necessary for different pairs depending on, I guess, their habits. And you'll notice even if the eggs aren't fertilized, the parents will sit there and fan the eggs, um, which I think is absolutely adorable. So they're just keeping the airflow around the eggs and making sure that you know things aren't growing on them and stuff like that. Um, quite often, if eggs fall off, they'll pick up the eggs and put them back up with the rest of the eggs and make sure that they're okay. Um, that's one thing I really thought was super cute about discus is that they are so, such good little parents. A lot of fish uh, just eat their fry, whereas discus, um, you know, when they get it right, they actually are really good parents. In terms of tank setup, you would want to make sure that you have this pair in their own tank. Um, I just I had mine in a community tank because I didn't actually have a proper breeding set up and it's not something that I really was planning on doing. Um, but if you are wanting to get into discus breeding, I would highly suggest a really good setup um, where you have a tank for the parents um, and then a nice big grow out tank as well that's got similar water conditions, if not exactly the same to the, uh, the tank that they were um, born in. So once you've got a successful batch of eggs that have made it through the time period um, from being laid to hatch, um, they will start to become little wrigglers and um, that's when you know that they're a successful pair. A lot of people think that they need to remove the parents, but the parents uh, actually play a really crucial role in the health of the babies in those first few weeks. Babies hatch from the eggs and become free swimming. They'll actually eat off the slime or the side of the parents and that will be their main food for the first few weeks um, and they'll actually get everything that they need from that um, and it will just be sort of a weaning process once they um, you know have weaned off the parents you'll be weaning them onto you know um, your, 
your brain shrimp and all that sort of those stuff. real fry sort of foods um, that you want to sort of uh, wean them off. The parents will probably get to a stage where they're sick of feeding the babies and um, or the babies are actually starting to damage the parents by eating off them and that's when you know it's time to actually remove the parents and leave the babies and try and wean them, try and wean them off the parent. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I mean I probably could have had a bit of success if I actually decided to get the proper set up and all that sort of stuff. Um, I just didn't have the room, the time, the money to actually do it. But I actually had a pair that laid every single water change and that's even with my, you know, really bad tap water down here. So it just goes to show that you don't need to have a fancy setup to breed discus. Um, maybe the eggs wouldn't have hatched if, you know, I, I went to that stage and they didn't get eaten by tank mates. Maybe, you know, they wouldn't have hatched because of the, the tap water and maybe um, you do need uh, RO water or better than what my tap water was. But if you are willing to put in the time and the energy into it and have a nice little setup, um, they really are awesome to breed. They're great parents. You need to be prepared to put in a lot of time and energy into it. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are finding that discus actually do breed pretty easily on their own. So if you just go that extra step and, and put in the time and uh, the right setup and everything, um, you can have quite a lot of success. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. And yeah, we'll see you next time.